Good day everyone! Welcome to our Fisheries Professionals Lesson Chair Examination Review. This review is intended for those fisheries graduates and students who will take the fisheries board exam. In this video, we are going to respond to some possible board exam questions. But before we proceed, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to get notified when we upload new videos. So let us start! Question number 31 any fish stock belonging to the species listed in Annex 1 of the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea is considered highly migratory. Which of these species is are considered highly migratory? A. Marlins B. Swordfish C. Frigate Mackerel Or letter D. All of these The correct answer for this question is letter D, all of these. When we talk about highly migratory fish stocks, it is mainly refers to fish species that migrate throughout the ocean and have a broad geographic range and usually denotes tuna and tuna-like species, sharks, marlins, and swordfish. So we have here the list of the highly migratory species from the Annex 1 of Onclos. Please take note of this species. Question number 32. Which of the following statement is true? 1. There are more municipal fishermen than commercial fishermen. 2. The number of commercial fishing boats is lower than that of municipal fishing boats. 3. In 2021, Tilapia was a top producing commodity in inland municipal fisheries. Or 4. In the national capital region, commercial fishing yields a greater yield than municipal fishing. A. 1 and 2 B. 3 and 4 C. 1, 2 and 3 Or letter D. 1, 2, 3 and 4 The answer for this question is letter D, 1, 2, 3, and 4. With the first statement that there are more municipal fishermen than in commercial, this is true. Based on the 2021 Municipal Fisher Folk Registration System or Fish R data, 2.19 million municipal fisher folk were engaged in various fishing activities. More than half, or 50.03% of the registered municipal fisher folk were involved in capture fishing. During the same year, there were 923 commercial fishing vessel operators based on the Fishing Vessel E-Licensing System, or FILIS. On the second statement, wherein the number of commercial fishing boats is lower than that of municipal fishing boats, this statement is true. We can say that it is true because according to the data on Philippine Fisheries Profile 2021, as of 2021, there were 209,126 recorded fishing vessels in municipal capture fisheries. While based on the data on Phillies, there were only 923 commercial fishing vessel operators. Meanwhile, when we talk about municipal capture fisheries, it was categorized into two types. We have the marine municipal capture fisheries and inland municipal capture fisheries. In marine municipal capture fisheries, tuna was a top producing commodity, followed by sardines and other species. And region 9 was a top producing region in terms of volume, and region 6 was a top producing region in terms of values. Then, in terms of inland municipal capture fisheries, Tilapia was a top producing commodity and Barm was a top producing region in terms of volume and value. 
So the third statement that in 2021, the tilapia was a top producing commodity in inland municipal fisheries is true. By the way, all of the information stated earlier was based on the Philippine Fisheries Profile 2021. For the last statement, in the national capital region, commercial fishing yields a greater yield than municipal fishing. This statement is also true. So we have here the volume of regional fisheries production 2021 from PSA. In national capital region, commercial fisheries gain a volume of production of about 76,740, while its municipal fisheries only reach 5,518. Question number 33. On what year was the Republic Act 8550 amended? A. 2014 B. 2015 C. 2016 or letter D, 2017. The correct answer for this question is letter B, 2015. The Republic Act 8550 is an act providing for the development, management, and conservation of the fisheries and aquatic resources, integrating all laws pertaining thereto and for other purposes. It is known as the Philippine Fisheries Code of 1998. This Republic Act was enacted on February 17, 1998, passed on February 19, 1998, approved on February 25, 1998, and took effect on March 23, 1998, during the term of former President Fidel V. Ramos. The Philippine Fisheries Code of 1998 was amended on February 27, 2015, by the RA 10654 during the term of former President Benigno Aquino III, providing higher penalties while mandating better monitoring systems to stop illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing. Question number 34. The capture, possession, transporting, sailing, trading, and exporting of fried, juvenile, and gravid spiny lobster palinoridae were all regulated under V265. What is the local name of these spiny lobsters? A. Langaw Langaw B. Poerolus C. Banagan or letter D. Alien The answer for this question is letter C, Banagan. Spiny lobster is locally known as Banagan. This species is belong to the family Palinoridae. It was called spiny lobster due to many spine on the carapace and basal segments of the long second antennae. The capture, possession, transporting, sailing, trading, and exporting of its fry, juvenile, and gravid were all regulated under V265. When we talk about Puilorus, it is the fry stage of spiny lobsters, pre-juvenile, swimming, and non-feeding transitional stage short lived and lasting for 2-3 to three weeks prior to juvenile. It looks like a very small lobster, but it's still translucent. On the other hand, langaw langaw is a local term referring to a mangrove crablet. It is the early juvenile stage of mangrove crabs with carapace width less than 5 cm. The regulation on the catching, possession, transporting, sailing, trading and exporting of mangrove crablets juvenile mangrove crops, and gravid mangrove crops, the silly species, were regulated under V264. Kotokoto and Ilian are the another local names for mangrove crablets. Question number 35. This is the largest lake in the Mindanao and the second largest in the Philippines. It's considered as one of the 15 ancient lakes in the world. This is known as Blanc. This is the largest lake in Mindanao and the second largest in the Philippines. It is considered as one of the 15 ancient lakes in the world. This is known as Blanc. A. Lake Dapao 
B. Buluan Lake C. Lake Lanao or letter D. Lake Wood The answer for this question is letter C, Lake Lanao. Lake Lanao is geographically located in central Mindanao in the province of Lanao del Sur. It is the largest lake in Mindanao and the second largest in the Philippines. It was considered as one of the 15 Asian lakes in the world. It has five watersheds with rivers and major tributaries. The lake is famous locally for its various uses and internationally for its endemic cyprinids. This lake has an area of 34,809.49 hectares. So we have here the list of the major lakes in the Philippines, starting of Laguna de Bay, Lake Nanao, Taal Lake, Lake Mainit, Naujan Lake, Lake Buluan, Lake Batu, Buhi Lake, Lake Dapao, Lake Cebu, Lake Wood, Manugao Lake, Baaw Lake, Pawai Lake, Lake Maunghan, Lake Danao, Lake Pagusi, Pinamaloy Lake, Lake Balut, Lake Emilda, Bito Lake, Lake Nunungan, and Lake Sampalo. In the 2020 Philippine Fisheries Profile list of major lakes in the Philippines, Lake Cebu of South Cotabato was included in the top 10. However, in the most recent publication, the 2021 Philippine Fisheries Profile, it was replaced by Lake Wood of Zamboanga del Sur. Question number 36. What is the most popular and effective fishing gear for pelagic fishes in the Philippines? What is the most popular and effective fishing gear for pelagic fishes in the Philippines? A. Pull and line. B. Gill net. C. Persin. Or letter D. Trowel. The correct answer for this question is letter C, Persin. Persin is used to encircle fish schools in midwater, close to the surface by a knitting wall with small meshes. The lower part of the net is then closed to prevent escapement by diving. In general, the persins are surface gears used in the marine, coastal, and high sea waters. Aggregated resources in the upper levels are most common but fish at depths up to 300 meters can be targeted. The first scene can be used by a large range of vessel sizes, ranging from open boats and canoes up to large ocean-going vessels. The first scenes can be operated by one or two boats. Most usual is a first scene operated by a single boat, per scene, with or without an auxiliary skiff. Moreover, the first scenes are also used in inland areas when there is enough room for the operation of a large net. Persin fishing is used almost exclusively for pelagic fish like herrings, sardines, sardinella, anchovies, mackerels, and tunas. According to Southeast Asian Fisheries Development Center, the persin is operated mostly in West Palawan waters, the South Sulu Sea, the Visayan Sea, the Moro Gulf, and Lamon Bay. Ground scud, sardines, skipjack, Frigate tuna and mackerel are the major species caught by the first scene. Question number 37. Commercial fishing vessels may fish within municipal waters if the following conditions are met. Commercial fishing vessels may fish within municipal waters if the following conditions are met. 1. Applicant vessel, including the ship owner, employer, captain, and crew have been certified by the appropriate agency as not having violated with the fisheries code, environmental laws, and related laws. 2. Methods and gears used in fishing must not be illegal. 3. The vessels can only operate within a 10.1 to 15 kilometers area from the shoreline. 4. Commercial fishing is allowed in waters less than 7 fathoms deep as certified by the appropriate agency. 
A, 1 and 2, B, 3 and 4, C, 1, 2 and 3, or letter D, 2, 3 and 4. Correct answer for this question is letter C, 1, 2, and 3. It was stated in Section 18 of the Philippine Fisheries Code or the RA 8550 as amended by RA 10654 that all fishery-related activities in municipal waters shall be utilized by municipal fisher folk and their cooperatives or organizations who are listed as such in the registry of municipal fisher folk. However, the local government unit or LGU may authorize or permit commercial fishing vessels through an ordinance under the following conditions. First, only small to medium commercial fishing vessels are allowed to fish in municipal waters. Second, the vessels can only operate within a 10.1 to 15 km area from the shoreline. Third, no commercial fishing in depths less than 7 fathoms. Fourth, Methods and gears used in fishing must not be illegal. Fifth, prior consultation through a public hearing with the municipal or city pharmacy has been conducted. And last, the applicant vessel, including the ship owner, employer, captain, and crew have been certified by the appropriate agency as not having violated this code or the Philippine Fisheries Code, environmental laws, or related laws. Question number 38. The most popular and effective fishing gear for the Mersal fishes in the Philippines is known as Blam. The most popular and effective fishing gear for the Mersal fishes in the Philippines is known as Blam. A. 12. B. Pole and line. C. Gill net. Or letter D. Persing. The answer for this question is letter A. Troll. The troll nets are cone shaped nets made from two, four, or more panels which are towed by one or two boats on the bottom or in mid water. There are various types of trolls used depending on the target species, operations, and others. Filipino fishermen continued to modify their troll nets from beam trolls. The next was the introduction of twin engines in 1958 for catching fast-swimming fish and more modifications in order to have a higher vertical opening. In the latter part of 1966, the Norwegian type troll was adopted by the industry. During the early part of the 1970s, a German troll net was tried in Manila Bay. This was the Hermann Ingel type and it was made of pure nylon twine. Lately, in 1992, the bottom fair troll was introduced by Chinese fishermen under a joint venture agreement. There are more modifications of troll that have been introduced into the trolling industry in the country. And presently, the otter troll is the most effective fishing gear for catching the mersal fish in muddy, sandy bottom conditions. Additionally, it contributes some pelagic species. Furthermore, troll is used both by the municipal and commercial fishermen. And troll fishing in the Philippines can be grouped into three major categories, the otter troll, fair troll, and bean troll. Question number 39. How can fishing effort and fisheries resources be managed for traceability by tracking and monitoring the position, course, and speed of the vessels at any given time? A. Through implementation of the vessel monitoring measures. B. Through implementation of the vessel monitoring management. C. By establishing the limit reference points. Or letter D. By establishing the target reference points. The correct answer for this question is letter A, through implementation of the vessel monitoring measures. 
the VMM or Vessel Monitoring Measures are methods used to track and monitor the position, course, and speed of the vessels at any given time for the purpose of the management of fishing effort and fisheries resources and for stability. This shall cover VMS or the Vessels Monitoring System and other measures. The Vessels Monitoring System is a satellite-based system used to track and monitor the position, course, and speed of the vessels at any given time for the purpose of management of fishing effort and fishing resources and for traceability. An example of this is an Automatic Location Communicator or ELC. ELC is one of the tracking devices approved by the BIPAR or Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources to be installed on fishing vessels that uses satellite navigation and communication systems for the purpose of transmitting information concerning the Philippine flag fishing vessels' positions, fishing activities, and any other vessel activity. So the question is, which vessels are covered by VNM? It applies to all licensed Philippine flag fishing vessels operating within and outside Philippine waters as follows. First, all licensed Philippine flag commercial catcher and carrier vessels operating outside Philippine waters must be installed with ITOWI Automatic Location Communicator or ELC. Then second, for catcher vessels operating in Philippine waters, the application of VMM is determined in consultation with the stakeholders. The rules and regulation for the implementation of VMM or Vessels Monitoring Measures and the Electronic Reporting System for Commercial Philippine Flag Fishing Vessels were under FAO No. 266, Series of 2020. It amended the FAO No. 260, Series of 2018. Under FAO No. 266, VMM shall apply to licensed Philippine Flag Fishing Vessels targeting straddling and highly migratory stocks within and outside Philippine water. No commercial vessel shall engage in fishing activity without VMM. The VMM is also applied to all licensed Philippine flag commercial fishing vessels authorized by the BIFAR to operate in the high seas and those fishing vessels with access rights to fish in other countries' exclusive economic zones. Question number 40 These are biological indicators that are used to compare and show where the stock should be in terms of harvest, size, yield, catch rates, size at maturity, and others for them to be considered at a sustainable level. A. Harvest control rules B. Harvest control measures C. Reference points or letter D. All of these. The answer for this question is letter C, reference points. Reference points are biological indicators that use to compare and show where the stock should be in terms of harvest, sizes, yield, catch rates, size at maturity, and others, for it to be considered at a sustainable level. It serves as benchmarks or standards for manager to impose adjustments in the harvest and use of the stocks. They provide a basis for determining what are to be avoided, maintained, and achieved. It helps managers to decide how the fishery is performing and determine the success of the harvest strategies. Reference points under FAO No. 263 is defined as the benchmark values, often based on indicators such as fishery stock size or the level of fishing that serves as standard to compare estimate of a fishery stock size and fishing mortality over time depending on the biological characteristics of the species. So we have here the three types of reference points. Limit reference points wherein it is a level that should be avoided. Similar to a red light, when you approach it, you need to stop. It is a fishery stock size or level of fishing that managers do not want to reach or exceed. The next is trigger reference point. It is a level that signals the need to take prescribed actions. Similar to a yellow light, when you approach it, you should slow down or exercise caution. It represents an intermediate fishery stock size or level of fishing that alerts managers 
and may initiate in management action to, for instance, slow the level of fishing to avoid exceeding a limit reference point. In essence, the trigger can provide a buffer between the limit and target reference points. Then last, the target reference points. It is a level to be achieved and maintained, similar to a green light but more like a bullseye on an archery target. It is a fishery stock size or level of fishing mortality that we aim for. It incorporates biological, ecological, social, and economic considerations. It should never be lower than the limit reference point and should be sufficiently higher to ensure managers have a buffer to account for uncertainty. Question number 41. Which of the following sense organs allows fishes to detect even the slightest or weakest water movements? Which of the following sense organs allows fishes to detect even the slightest or weakest water movements? A. Statocyst B. Lateral line C. Ampulla of Lorenzeni or letter D. Fins The answer for this question is letter B, lateral line. The lateral line is a sensory system that allows fishes to detect weak water motions, vibrations, and pressure gradients. It also allows fishes to orient themselves in a water current or rail taxis, gain information about the spatial environment, and plays a vital role in schooling. The sensory cells within the lateral line are known as hair cells. In the lateral line, Hair cells are contained in sensory units known as neuromas. As mentioned by Blickman and Zilek 2009, neuromas is the smallest functional unit of the lateral line. It is a sensory structure that consists of a hair cell epithelium and a cupola that connects the ciliary bundles of the hair cells with the water surrounding the fish. Moreover, they cited that lateral line of most fishes consists of hundreds of superficial neuromas spread over the head, trunk, and tail fin. Meanwhile, the statocyst is a balanced sensory receptor present in some aquatic invertebrates including bivalves, nidarians, denephorans, echinoderms, cephalopods, and crustaceans. Ampulla of Lorenzeni are electroreceptor sense organs able to detect electric fields. They form a network of mucus filled pores in the skin of cartilaginous fish such as sharks, rays, and cameras, and of basal bony fishes such as redfish, sturgeon, and lungfish. In sharks, these organs are mainly found on the rostral part of the head. On the other hand, the fins of fish serves various functions including stabilization of the body during swimming, locomotion, and staring, advertisement during courtship, and fanning eggs during parental care. Question number 42. What is the rule of the LG used in the FMA? What is the rule of the LG used in the FMA? 1. Ensure that local regulations and management measures are consistent with the FMA resolutions. 2. Submit a summary report to the FMA Management Board on their compliance with the FMA Ecosystem Approach to Fisheries Management Framework Plan. 3. Prepares their respective EFM Action Plan or updates their existing Coastal Resource Management Plan to be consistent with the FMA EFM Framework Plan as may be appropriate. 4. Have the power to manage and implement regulations of fisheries in municipal waters. A. 1 and 2 B. 1, 2 and 3 C. 1, 2, 3 and 4 Or letter D. 1 only The answer for this question is letter C, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we have here the rules of the LGUs in the FMA. LGUs retain their power to manage and implement regulations of fisheries in municipal waters as provided by law. LGUs will ensure that local regulations and management measures are consistent with the FMA resolutions 
including the FMA Ecosystem Approach to Fisheries Management Framework Plan, the established reference points, the adapted harvest control rules, and the recommended harvest control measures. As may be appropriate or needed, the LGUs, in consultation with their respective pharmacies, will enact local ordinances based on the FMA resolutions. The LGUs also prepares their respective EFM action plan or updates their existing coastal resource management plan to be consistent with the FMA AFM framework plan as may be appropriate. At the end of each year, LGUs will submit a summary report to the FMA management board on their compliance with the FMA ecosystem approach to fisheries management framework plan and their conservation and management measures based on the reference points and harvest control rules. Question number 43. What is the mesh size of the fisherman's netting if claims that it has 13 nets when stretched in a 6-inch net? What is the mesh size of the fisherman's netting if claims that it has 13 nets when stretched in a 6-inch net? A. 2.3 cm B. 2.5 cm C. 2.7 cm or letter D. 3 centimeters. The answer is 2.5 centimeters. Based on the problem, we have a given number of nets which is 13. Then we should know first the formula on how to get the mesh size either in centimeter or inches. For centimeters, we will use the 30.48 divided by k or not minus 1. And for inches, we will use 12 divided by k or not minus 1. After that, we should substitute the given value of k, then proceed in solving the mesh size. So, 30.48 divided by 13 minus 1 is equal to 30.48 divided by 12. So the final answer is 2.54 centimeters. Number 44. What is the function of bioluminescence in deep water animals? What is the function of bioluminescence in deep water animals? 1. Use for defense. 2. Serves for locating prey. 3. Help in finding mates. 4. Utilize for species identification. A. 1 only B. 1 and 2 C. 1, 2 and 3 Or letter D. 1, 2, 3 and 4 The correct answer for this question is letter D, 1, 2, 3, and 4. According to NOAA.gov, bioluminescence is the ability of an organism to create light. It is one of nature's most amazing phenomena, seemingly drawn more from science fiction than science and natural history. It is the light produced by an organism using a chemical reaction. It is most common among fish, squid, and what we call the gelatinous zooplankton, like jellyfish, siphonophores, com jellies, and other animals that are mostly made of water. As mentioned by OceanConservancy.org, all bioluminescent animals contain luciferin. It is a compound that produces light when it reacts with oxygen. But some, like tiny dinoflagellic plankton, produce their own, where others, like squid and some fish, absorb bacteria that contain luciferin. Deep ocean environments are almost completely dark, yet light is still important in these environments. Thus, bioluminescence may provide a survival advantage in the darkness of the deep sea, helping organisms find food, assisting in reproductive processes, and providing defensive mechanisms. But we don't really know the main purpose or function of bioluminescence. Number 45 According to the Philippine Fisheries Profile of 2021, tuna was a top producing species for captured fisheries contributing 23.10% of the total captured fisheries production volume. What tuna species is locally known as Ulyasan? According to the Philippine Fisheries Profile of 2021, 
Tuna was a top producing species for captured fisheries, contributing 23.10% of the total captured fisheries production volume. What tuna species is locally known as Bulyasan? A. Big Eye B. Friday C. Skipjack or letter D. Yellowfin The answer for this question is letter C, skipjack. The top producing species for captured fisheries in terms of volume production in our country is the tuna, which comprise of frigate tuna, which is locally known as tulingan, skipjack as bulyasan, eastern little tuna, which is locally known as bonito, big eye tuna and yellowfin tuna, which both locally known as tambacol or barilis. On the other hand, Bali sardinelia, was a top producing species among small pelagic species, slip mouth among demersal species, and skipjack among oceanic tuna. Before we end this session, we have here a question to answer wherein you can type your answer on the comment section. For the year 2021, what region had the biggest contribution to the total captured fisheries production value? For the year 2021, what region had the biggest contribution to the total captured fisheries production value? So that ends our review questions. I hope you learned a lot from this video. See you in the next session. Thank you.